Welcome to our Create a Course tutorial. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the Create a Course tool. With this tool, you'll be able to turn pre existing training material into an online course. You'll first access the tool by clicking here. Keep in mind, this tool is restricted to site administrators. Regular learners accessing the site will not see this feature. After clicking, you'll see these three options. Create a course allows you to begin creating your own online course. I'll take you through this feature last since it requires multiple steps. DIY course listing gives you a list of courses that your fellow site users have created. Give DIY access allows administrators to give non-administrative learners access to the Create a Course tool. For example, you may have a learner who assists with training or course creation who does not otherwise deal with site admin tasks. If you grant access to that learner, they'll be able to use the tool without becoming a site admin. You grant access by clicking here. If you want to remove access, you'll click the same button again. When you grant access, the DIY menu item will appear on their accounts. You can grant access to as many users as you'd like. Now, let's learn how to create your online course. The progress bar along the top outlines the steps to creating a course. You will have access to it throughout the process. If at any time you want to go back to a step to make changes, simply click on the step you want to return to. To begin, click Start DIY Wizard. Choose a name for the course. This is the name that will appear in the course listing and on the course certificate. I've named my course Sample Training Material. Once the course is named, you can upload a PowerPoint, PDF, or video. You can also create a blank course. You'll select this option if you want to start your course from scratch without the use of existing files. You can skip to quiz if you want to create a multiple choice quiz without creating a course. Let's assume you want to create a course using existing training material. To upload a PowerPoint or PDF, click here. If you want the course to display the same formatting and font used in your PowerPoint, convert the PowerPoint into a PDF and upload the PDF version. This will ensure the file uploads exactly as seen on your screen. To select the desired file from your device, select Choose File. Here, I've chosen a PowerPoint file. Next, click Upload. The tool begins converting the material into a course. This shouldn't take long, but it does depend on the size of the file and your connection speed. Once the conversion is complete, you'll see this screen. Select Continue to Course, and you can begin editing. To upload a video, click here. Select the video file from your device by clicking here. You can also add three additional files to improve accessibility. The loading slide is the image learners will see as the video loads. This is especially important for learners with slow connection speeds. Captions provide text to supplement the audio. This is important for learners who are hearing impaired. Descriptions are intended for learners who are blind or have impaired vision. This file will contain spoken descriptions of visuals. Once you've added the files, click Upload. This bar will appear, showing you the progress of the upload. Once the upload is complete, you'll be taken to the editing page. In this video, I'll edit a PowerPoint. The process is the same for videos and PDFs as well. When you first access the page, your browser may request access to your device's mic. This message may look different depending on your browser and device. If you want to record audio, click Allow. On this page, you can give the slide a title. When learners take the course, this title will appear above that slide's content. Slide text is used for people with screen readers or for learners whose internet connection is too slow to load the slide image. Typing words here will not change the text on the image below. If you do not want the slide to be part of the course, you can disable the slide. When learners take the course, they will not see any of the slides you've disabled. Total wait time allows you to set the length of time you want learners to spend on a slide. A learner is unable to go to the next slide before that predetermined time. If you scroll down, you'll find more editing options. To add audio, use these features. There are two ways to add audio. If your device has a mic, you can record audio right in the program. 
click the record button and start speaking. Click stop recording when you are done. You can listen to what you've recorded by clicking play. When you're finished, make sure to upload the audio to the slide. If you have existing audio files you'd like to upload, click here and find the file on your device. It must be a WAV file. If your audio is not a WAV file, I recommend using an online audio conversion site that will allow you to convert your audio files to the WAV format. Once you've selected the desired WAV file, click Upload to Slide. If you want to remove the audio you've added, click here. If you'd like to add typewritten narration, click on the Show Narration button. This allows you to type in what you'd like the narration to say. I recommend that the narration matches the recorded audio. When you are done, click Add Narration to Slide. You can add a message to your learners here. The message will display at the bottom of the slide. This is helpful if you'd like to direct the learners to an outside link, such as a YouTube video, as part of the course. These options will be useful when uploading a video, but are not necessary when uploading a PowerPoint or PDF. Clicking these buttons will show you the three additional files you uploaded during the first step. If you didn't upload additional files during that first step, you can do so now by clicking Add Info to Slide. Scrolling to the bottom of the page allows you to see your uploaded slides. If you want to edit a slide, click on it. Once highlighted, you can change the slide title, add audio, or use any of the other options we've just explored. To change the order of the slides, use these buttons. You can also click, drag and drop the slides to change their order. If you want to add a slide, click the plus button where you want the slide to appear. You can then choose if you want the slide to be an image or a video. For images, you must upload a single file. Keep in mind that images must be at least 800 pixels wide or the file will not upload. You can add a slide description if desired. Click Add Slide to upload the image to your course. If you want to add a video, upload the desired video file and add the three additional files, the loading slide, caption, and description if desired. Finally, click Add Slide. Once you've added the slide, it will appear with the others, as shown here. If you don't like the slide you've uploaded, or you want to get rid of a slide, you can disable the slide, as shown earlier. Make sure the slide you want to disable is highlighted in the green box. Scroll to the top and click here. Remember, disabled slides will not appear when taking the course. If you disable a slide, it will still appear with the other slides, but will be faded, as shown here. When you've finished editing and arranging your slides, click Continue to Create Quiz. This screen allows you to create a multiple choice quiz for your learners. If you don't want to create a quiz, click Skip this section. If you want to create a quiz, type in your question and add up to four responses. Be sure to select the correct answer. By default, the quiz includes 10 questions. You can input fewer questions if desired. You can also add more questions by clicking here. When you've finished creating the quiz, click Submit. Here, you'll determine the duration of the course. Note that clock hours are given in decimals. For example, if the course will take an hour, select 0.1. If the course will take 30 minutes, select 0.05. If you created a quiz, you can set a passing score. Choose any number from 0 to 100. The final step allows you to choose your loading image and catalog image. Recall that the loading image is the image that appears as the course loads. You can use the default loading image or click the second bubble to upload your own image. Keep in mind, the image must be larger than 800 pixels wide. Catalog images are the thumbnail pictures that will appear beside your course in the course catalog and on the My Courses page. We recommend you choose an image, as it makes your course more easily identifiable. This image must be 400 by 300 pixels. Once you've completed this page, click Complete Course. This is where you'll review the course you've created before submitting it. Click Begin to start reviewing the slides you've created. To continue to the next slide, click the blue button. If you added audio narration, you'll be able to view it by clicking here. Once you've viewed the course, you'll receive this message. Click Continue to submit a course. Here, you can give your course a description. This is the description that will be used in the course catalog. 
check this box to agree to the licensing terms. You'll also decide whether you want the course published now or later. Finally, you'll agree and verify the course. The course should now appear on the DIY course listing. If you chose to have the course published now, Published should appear under the Status column. If you chose Later, it will read Unpublished. You can return here to edit the course at any time. Simply click Edit to begin. That completes our Create a Course tutorial. If you have any questions about the tool, contact a member of our staff or visit our support hub and they'll be happy to help.